and welcome back to another episode of United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. And I must say hello first from the UK because I am closing out my European trip. And of course, I have my co-host Lionel from Toronto, Canada. And uh, I am unfortunately not in London. Yes. Not even yes. Ontario. <laughs> yet alone England. So yes. well, so I apologize for <laughs> the uh, poor video quality, um, and I'm not really sure what the audio sounds like. Hopefully, it's okay. Um, I'm having to use my little road mic here. Lighting's not. Too oh, it sounds fine. Road, 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 road mics are good. So you're yeah, you're so, good. Okay, excellent. So this is what we got. But road. So yeah, I have spent. Um, <laughs> since last Saturday, roaming the European countryside with my son. And it's been absolutely amazing. If anybody out there is in Europe or traveling to Europe and you're going to be in uh, Belgium, mm. make sure you make a trip to Ghent and Bruges, two little towns outside of Brussels that are just amazing. They're not near as commercialized and touristy as Brussels and some of the other cities. And they are, it's literally some of the most beautiful towns and countryside I have ever seen. It's amazing. So that, that would be, that would be a lot of fun. And I, I'm not going to lie to you. If I, if I ever get the chance to go gallivanting through parts of Europe, that's exactly what I would want to do is I would be less interested in seeing you know, uh, Berlin and, and London as I would be, um, in seeing, yeah. you know, small, small little towns, you know, uh, in various countries where people just, you know, live there. Yeah. I mean, there was first in Ghent, but it was far less and it's very, very hometown like, you know, it's, it's very much, yeah. um, an outside city. Uh, and I was actually surprised. So we went to Cologne <laughs> and we got to see the cathedral with his magnificence, that structure. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it survived the war. It's amazing. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it's pretty massive. Um, it's too bad you didn't have more time to spend in, in, in some place. Like if you were on a month long vacation or something like that, um, there are so many different things like it, it first of all being in england and you mentioned small towns uh from what i understand there are a lot of absolutely gorgeous little towns all over england um which are obviously a different world compared to being in london or any of the major cities i imagine uh and it'd be the same in belgium same in england same in or germany same in france wherever but yeah germany's known for uh, cathedrals and castles. <laughs> I've never seen yeah. anything other than in pictures on the internet. It's just books. amazing to me, though, what has actually survived, you know, World War II with all the bombings. Yeah. And it, it's just, it, it just takes it to a whole different place. And you kind of, it's hard to conceptualize the amount of, suffering and just despair the whole region was in back in that time. yeah uh we went to um bastogne as well and of course that's where the battle of the bulge was just outside bastogne in luxembourg and of course big battle in bastogne and they have a world war ii memorial that is magnificent i mean it's huge and it's a lot of information and ironically there were times when I looked at my son, I was like, are we in a U.S. war memorial? Because there's so much U.S. memorabilia everywhere. It's yeah. like, you know, he, there's even some stores to this day in Bastogne that fly the American flag in their store. Yeah, well, the, the, you know what? If you remember, we had this conversation, <laughs> too. Like when you were first driving through there and you sent me that picture. So, oh, hey, we're going we're going through here right now. and We're on our way, blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, and I remember saying, well, um, saying to you that, well, there's, and I was making a joke because, you know, about, about uh, Canadians being very popular in, 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 uh, in Belgium and the Netherlands and stuff, right? 
and and they are <laughs> because they were places that were freed by Canadian troops where they liberated them literally. But that's true for British troops, American troops. And depending on where you go, you can go to one region and another. And in one region, there it's just a ton of, of uh, places where you can see where they're like, uh, yeah, we're, you know, for generations, they appreciate uh, that Americans came in there and liberated them, that British, the Canadians do. So it's not surprising that where yeah. you went, you saw uh, a, a memorial with all, all of this American stuff uh, uh, and, and names of soldiers, I imagine, who, who gave their life. And that's the other thing is, is they forever want to com not commemorate. That's kind of the wrong word. Uh, but remember the people yeah. who gave their lives for their freedom. Yeah. And it's, it, that's a huge deal. I mean, we don't realize that in North America as much because no, we, we, we fought for our own freedoms, but we've, we don't know in, in the last, you know, four generations, what it's like to have someone else come over and liberate us from freedom because America liberated themselves. Canadians liberated themselves. French liberated themselves. French Canadians. I mean, um, and not through war necessarily in some cases, yes, but in some cases, no. So it is, it is different. And I honestly, I am envious because I'd love to be able to see the things that you've seen. So, yeah. And, and actually, <laughs> I guess it really depends too on where you go as to what, allied force is recognized because you know the canadians landed somewhere the british landed somewhere the u.s landed somewhere yeah and obviously russia ironically was an ally at that time against germany you know the russians uh, <laughs> kind of in a roundabout so. way it was it was <laughs> it was basically the russians originally had a deal with with uh nazi germany um and and the nazis reneged on that deal so the Russians just said, you know, we're going to go in and do this and we don't want anybody getting in our way. So in a sense, they, they, the only reason why we can call them allies at that time was because they basically said, they pissed us off. Don't get in our way. We're going to liberate ourselves and show them what for. And they, they did. <laughs> yeah. By yeah. sheer numbers. They didn't have the equipment. They didn't have the right. training. But they had stupid amounts of numbers. And by this point, the British had already kind of that British, I'm sorry, the Nazis had shot themselves in the foot. So they, they, yeah. they, they were, they, they were spread too thin. They were fighting in Africa. They were fighting in Eastern Europe. They were fighting in Western Europe. They, they, and everybody said, well, they were fighting on two fronts. No, they weren't. They were fighting on like five fronts. Yeah. So they, yeah. they had zero chance. And that's not even including out in the water where originally well, you gotta, you gotta really damage, too, and now they're, Italy was allied to Germany. So Italy and Germany were both yeah. fighting on these fronts. And of course, then Japan, you know, attacked the U.S. Right. And we all know what happened with that. That's what brought the U.S. into the war. And yeah, once once I think the U.S. came in and galvanized all of the allied forces, um, you know, because, you know, the British were like on the verge of collapse, you know. Not exactly. Um, that's 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 kind of a misnomer. They, well, they, they, I shouldn't I, say no collapse. It's, it's they actually, were here, here's, thin. Here's the, uh, here, they were spread thin, but here's the thing yes. about it. Between Canada, Britain, and other allies that didn't include the U.S. at this point, they were actually going to win the war, but it probably would have taken three more years just to get to the point where they would have been able to reinforce their own forces. Here's the thing you have to understand. When it came to how everything went, sea power, air power, manpower, 95% of that battle, of, of winning battles, were not American, except for D-Day. Because day, by that point, Americans had joined. In, in D-Day, it was a lot of British uh, sea um, equipment, the uh, those uh, landing craft. Uh, a lot of them were provided by by uh, Americans, uh, even when it was just British and Canadian troops going off. They came off of uh, American ships in many cases because they had a lot of them. <laughs> and they just started the war. They hadn't lost, lost anything yet, right? So th that was a huge, obviously, help. And the numbers that they put into the war, massive help. And once they actually had their air power in there, Obviously, that was a huge, massive help. But for the most part, 
air superiority belonged to Britain, and, and I want to say in Canada because a lot of the airplanes were built in Canada, and a lot of the airmen were Canadian, and they shot a lot of planes down in the war. So yeah, they they wouldn't have lost that war anyways. Germany had nothing to go on. They were spread. They spread themselves out too thin. Uh, without the Americans, that war would have taken another three years before Canada and Britain would have, uh, along with France by that point, would have basically uh, weakened them so much they would have been able to strengthen their own forces and win the war. When America came in, they basically shortened the war by about a year and a half in total and pretty much made the turnaround happen within six months rather than two years. So that war definitely lasted less time with America's help. <laughs> it was much easier but i just i bring that up because uh, it, you have no idea how many uh, canadians get really insulted when they hear americans say yeah we, we came in and won the war it wouldn't have won it without us and it, it's 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 just it's they don't teach some of the things that actually went on even in canadian schools to be honest with you it's embarrassing but that's actually well i truth. never assumed it was um all yeah. american um well I no i know that that's it's, why it's, i said yeah. that when they came into the war it kind of right. galvanized everyone together but by what i've seen here and you know some of the historical documentation and all yeah um the the british were not winning that war and they were not so i didn't say the british war. were winning the war the british the first of all if it wasn't if it wasn't for canada the British would have lost, but that was only because of those damn missiles. Germany did right. have air superiority at the time, but let's not forget that up until that moment, Britain still had sea superiority over every other country in the world, not knowing, nobody knew this but America at this time, that America really was about to have sea superiority that they never gave up to this day. Uh, but up to that point, Britain was still the de facto leader in, in superiority at sea. Um, the problem is, of course, Germany knew that. They made a lot of U-boats. They sunk a lot of stuff. But it was mostly merchant ships they were sinking, by the way. But unfortunately, that meant that Britain, you know, could, they did France. They cut off France. Then they cut off the sea. So they, it was harder for them to get stuff from Canada. But that's why Canada was involved so quickly. So Canadians made up a smaller now because we don't have a lot of numbers right but what we make up for is fierceness of our fighting uh the fact that we had uh well-trained people that could train other people uh we were able to knock out a lot of those u-boats uh over the years uh before america got into it but once america got in there of course their superior sea ships knocked a lot of u-boats right out of the war that was pretty much it it allowed britain to get their ships back out because britain didn't want to put a lot of their ships out uh in in the atlantic because they felt they needed to keep them as a blockade so they wouldn't be invaded by water and it's kind of understandable right so well, that's another thing where the americans were obviously of great help when they did join the war um so britain was they were they were in trouble <laughs> but the thing is, remember that they also changed leaders during the war. Uh, and the second leader is basically the one that made changes uh, to the war effort, uh, how they uh, how they how they operated there. Uh, and they started to win battles again. This was prior to the U.S. getting in. And, and I know that it was uh, when Pearl Harbor happened. America basically said, okay, fine, we're not going to sit back anymore. we got to get involved. But I'm pretty sure that England asking them to get involved had something to do with it, and they were already in talks about it before Pearl Harbor. Well, there's a movie that recently just came out um, this yeah. year called um, Ungentlemanly Warfare. And it's a <laughs> true story that yeah. I didn't even know about until I right. saw this movie. Um, obviously, I'm sure a lot of it's Hollywoodized, you know, but well, they always the, are to some extent. Yeah. The core story, I'm sure, you know, is what inspired it all, and it's it's really remarkable, uh, like what the British did to really turn the tide and give themselves the ability to actually 
make advances against the U-boats. It was really spectacular. I, I was like really impressed. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah. The, the the whole U-boat thing is really quite fascinating. A lot of people didn't realize how many U-boats there actually were. How many Allied ships they sunk, which was a yeah. lot more than I thought as a kid. Um, but how many of them were actually uh, sunk and stranded themselves? Yeah. And I say stranded because they weren't all sunk. Some of them were stranded because they were hunted so diligently Again, once the Americans got in there, like, uh, here's a good example. They would do um, beach invasions, right? Uh, bombard from out at sea with their massive cannons off to ships and stuff like that. But as they did this, there were other ships that had to actually get, to keep the lit shipping lanes open because they had to be resupplied just as much as everybody else. I mean, there were no nuclear ships back then. So they need to be resupplied just like every other, you know, ship and air regiment and every country and everything else so obviously they had a lot of hand in that but in the process uh if you remember how the americans patrolled the pacific during the war against the japanese they did it in in in, in the most efficient manner like the japanese would send like an entire fleet of carriers and this and that and they just kind of jumbled them all out there it's not like they didn't have a plan but they were basically just thinking blitz like the Germans and do it in numbers. Americans did it way smarter and that they would have your carrier and then you'd have your support ships. You'd have a battleship. You'd have a, I can't remember the name of that other one. Um, the other fighting one. Destroyer. A battleship. Destroyer. Thank you. And, and of course the destroyers would be out there. The battleships would be ready to, to bombard from a distance. Uh, and you have other ships. I can't remember the name of frigates or something like that, that basically, protect the carrier which is capable of protecting itself pretty well by the way uh, not even by the airplanes but with guns and everything and they they did this um kind of like a like a gang walking down the street except floating through the, the ocean where you've got scouts just like how i guess kind of like how romans would do it right <laughs> you got your scouts and then you got your guys up there that are ready to, to get take the first battle on uh and and draw people out and then you got the next ones that are going to shoot the long arrows far and then you got yeah. your air support uh with the carriers and and so they they kind of went about the same idea in in the atlantic except without the carriers uh and that you would have ships that would actually be listening for uh the subs and in the movies they would start dropping depth charges right away but in real life, they would do that, and they would radio to the next ship, who would then sonar again to pinpoint. And then another one would start dropping the depth charges. Then the sub would attempt to move, but a th another ship would come by and drop depth charges. They, they were incredibly successful in the way they did things. Um, yeah. they, they, looked, they took out a lot of them. That yes, was, it was a indeed. lot better. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, we're gonna. I'm gonna move off. I could talk yeah. a long time on this because it's really amazing history. I, I love it, it especially is, it is. being here and seeing things I've read about in history right. books and understanding. Um, it, it's been amazing, but unfortunately, yeah. I did not bring a you know a U.S. to U.K. or U.S. to European power adapter. <laughs> So I've oh, been running off USB uh, power. So I'm I'm a little short on my my laptop power. So uh, things, uh, you, know, you you for wonder. you forgot, huh? Did you? Well, I just didn't think about it. You know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah we bought free this. We bought this here, but this little USB charger just doesn't cut it on the laptop. That's fine on the devices, but the laptop. Yeah, just needs yeah, more yeah. Juice. How how much you got left in your laptop right now? Uh, it's like twenty five. Oh, that's not so. much. All right. Well, let's let's Love let's get on with some stuff. Um, uh, I, I, have you been keeping up with any news? You've just been probably lo a lot of busy because you're 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 traveling around and seeing beautiful things. Yeah, I've been I've been trying to keep up with it a little bit. Um, yeah, I haven't really been able to spend a lot of time because unfortunately, again, I haven't really been able to use my laptop much because I've kind of just had to leave it alone and let it trickle charge at night and get up with you know forty percent. You know, so. right. Okay. I haven't had a chance uh, to do a whole lot, so yeah. I'll I'll uh, I'll get on with the okay. 
uh, where are we? Uh, Pixel Watch 2, not 3, um, is now on Wear OS 5. Uh, I don't even know how to tell you this, but it's like this watch, not the 3, is now up to par with almost every other watch. It's missing maybe two things from the Pixel Watch 3, which is maybe a, a half a notch below the Galaxy Watch 7, which is the premier probably best smart watch in the market. I'm not talking about the one that lasts the longest, but I mean the one that could give you the most and technically at a cheaper price than some. Um, but this basically means that last year's already makes me feel like uh, I don't really need the three where I would want yeah. the three is, is for the bigger screen. And I'm just talking about the same size watch with a bigger screen. Um, but there's also the option of the actual bigger 45 millimeter one. So that that's an interesting thing. So anybody who's thinking about getting um, the three and not sure if they if the two is good enough, if the if the watch size doesn't bother you, uh, if you're good enough with it, uh, Wear OS five makes a huge difference. Um, there was some news about yeah. they had pulled the Wear OS five fr uh, from from the Pixel Watch two because there were people that didn't get they had to do a soft reboot, not a soft reboot. Uh, it was uh, how does what's the word I'm looking? It was soft. What's, what's wrong with it? Bricked. Soft bricked. As in, oh. it could be, you know, re, reinstalled and blah, 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 right? Um, it's an apparently very easy process, and it, and it would be, because if, if, as long as you've got your stuff backed up with Google One, of course. Um, however, those numbers are apparently very tiny amount, and that most people already got the Wear OS 5 on the watch. If not, wait a few more days, they'll fix it, and they'll do it again. Um, yeah. Otherwise... Yeah, so that's that's one thing. Uh, uh, as for Android 15, uh, rumored dates are now, and this is more of a confirmation slash rumor, and it's kind of hard to explain, uh, uh, October 15th, which I believe they wanted to do 14th, but that's Columbus Day or some other kind of holiday in the States. So help me out here. Not Columbus. Okay, I, one of those days. I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't I don't get Columbus Day off. I don't celebrate Columbus Day. I know it's a bank holiday and all that business, but I don't. Yeah, well, okay. I don't know why they would do that either. Um, it's kind of like, for instance, I just got a notification that uh, that some uh, government money benefit thing that I've got coming to me next week. Um, it might be delayed 24 hours because of Truth and Reconciliation Day, which is a day that Canada has, for the last few years now, uh, finally decided to acknowledge the asinine things that we did to the native population in this country long after we got here and became a country um it's about time we did and so uh get some education and do that so um and by the way when you watch hockey games that are from canada like the, the you know like the preds in winnipeg preds in toronto whatever uh you'll notice that all of them do that thing at the beginning of the game where they say we uh, we would like to uh recognize the, the so on and so on and you see the native american type symbols on the ice this is what that's about is it's an ongoing thing and the sports teams uh long ago have decided that they're going to do it continuously not once a year so anywho i went and rambled and <laughs> a little bit further than i intended to um shocker Oh yeah, okay. Uh, you're lucky you're in England, buddy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, all right. Well, uh, if, I, if I wasn't, you're gonna come down to the U.S. and teach me a lesson. Is that? Oh uh, yeah, come <laughs> down there. I'll give you yeah. what for. Bang, yeah, zoom. Yeah. No, seriously. Um, so, what one thing I wanted to mention <laughs> is, as you yeah. see, I'm using my Galaxy Bud three, you know, earphones right now. Yeah, that's um, right. Those are new, so right? I, I did try the live translation <laughs> does not work not ready for all. prime time not ready for prime time no no the, the especially right. the problem is that <laughs> when you're in a you know loud train station or on a bus or yeah. whatever the case may be it can't really hear you well and mm -hmm. like even my son and I were playing with it cuz he speaks very fluent spanish so, oh okay. I said, "Hey, let's test it out." And 
he would have to like pronunciate the Spanish word so good, that, you know, and it's like that that's ridiculous. That's never going to happen in the real world, right? I you know nobody what? you're talking to is gonna pronunciate every single vowel syllable or whatever they yeah, call and it. And if you Spanish. ask him to, they're gonna yeah. say you have a nice day and take yeah, off. Yeah. Um <laughs> so. here's the thing that I think should be interesting that I think it would be cool to see. Google and Samsung work together on that one since Google has a full suite of translation, but they don't yet do an actual live translation because not only could they do that, but they could put it into all of the phones, you know, yeah. add it in. Um, but Google's speech recognition is vastly superior to everyone else on the planet at this point. That's a fact. You can't go anywhere and anyone will tell you, Oh, yes, their speech recognition is way better than Google's, especially when you're typing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> ask anybody. They'll tell you yeah. it makes very little to no mistakes, right? Um, although I will tell you, in the Android 15 beta, that's not true. Tons of mistakes. I'm pissed off. I can't wait to get the final. This is killing me. Yeah. Yeah, but it's... Uh, it, it's So if anybody buys these because they think they can really use the, the, trend, the live translation, I... Maybe you'll have better luck, but I did not have that great. There, there is an alternative to so. it, though. You you could still use, you could, if it doesn't work, you can still turn on Google Translate and go into the live mode, which is a yeah. little different. It requires the other person to actually hear from your device or read from your screen. Um, yeah, yeah, we didn't but, use that, but I know that exists. Yeah. But I did use Google Translate because um, we went into the Overloon War Memorial which is in Ooh. Overloon, Netherlands. And it's, again, the Overloon. largest... I can't even figure out. <laughs> it's the largest collection of <laughs> World War II, you know, tanks, bullets, guns. Oh, that's I mean, the one you were telling me about? Is that the one you were telling me about? Oh, oh my day? gosh. It is so amazing. I don't that remember. Would be, that, would, that would be pretty cool to see. Yeah. yeah. Um, and nothing in there is in english everything is in english <laughs> or french and so or, we oh, had that's to right. use, oh, yeah. yeah we had to use uh we use google translate so when we go to the exhibits we would be able to see like what the exhibit was about um so that was interesting some was zero, some zero dutch english. words some dutch words are are related to or similar to german and others are vastly different entirely yeah. <laughs> um like just the name of the place to me uh i wouldn't even know how to spell it from what you said so um well it's it's <laughs> ov it's it's pretty basic i mean it's just it's overloon o-v-e-r-l-o-n as in nancy overloon oh it, it's, well, it's it's pretty much like it sounds yeah okay well, that's interesting then <laughs> yeah you can look it up um, and you can see that it's it it Apparently there was a very decisive battle fought there, and there was, of course, you know, the city was. Wait, okay, wait a minute. What did you say? What are you talking? What did you say? Netherlands. It's in the Netherlands. Oh. It's close to Poland. Uh. Poland, Poland, Germany is kind of down in that corner of the Netherlands. So, what's the significance of Overloon, Netherlands? Huh. It's not working. Well, <clears throat> that's crazy. I, it's like literally blank. It, it's like it heard me and just shut itself off. Well, I wanted to see I, what it was going to say. Mine's been doing that. Mine's been doing that all the last two days. I, I've didn't, been trying they, to use it, and it's been acting really weird. Yeah, they've done a couple of updates uh, recently that have made it better, but they're doing so many updates so quickly that you're you're going to find some snippets of oops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. snippets of oops but uh, in all honesty the reason i don't complain about it is there's so much to it um and they they it's updating at such a fast pace that i can honestly foresee in a couple of years most of the crap that they've got going on that you might complain about it today isn't going to be a big deal uh yeah. a year and a half from now even yet alone five years from now yeah but that's another story well, altogether. We don't have time to talk about that. Stuff yeah, right? I think we're going to have to uh, kind of wrap this up because I got about 15% left. Sorry, guys. 
<laughs> it's going to be a short 30 minutes instead of our normal hour. But um, yeah, yeah. We That's just want to get on is. here and, and let you know what was going on <laughs> and give you some exciting news and kind of fill you in on my trip. And I'll be posting a bunch of yeah. pictures. Uh, of course, a lot of you don't have my personal stuff, but um, I'll try to maybe create something we can put on the channel maybe next week or the week after. Right. My son and I were calculating it. I have taken about 1,400 pictures. That's not it? Not including my GoPro footage. That's so, it? That's a lot. I, listen, I go I, I go to the air show, and I take between 1,600 and 2,800 every year at just the air show. And that's right. not including on the way to the air show or on the way back home. Just saying. Yeah, well, I got a lot of pictures and video to go through, so <laughs> I'll try to get something together. Yeah, no, that's a, a that's weeks. that's a that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, he calculated it out based on the amount of hours we've been awake, and when we started the trip, that I took a picture every two and a half minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, well, like, you know, okay. you can you can get the exact number, I mean, by just looking at your devices that you took the picture on. <laughs> oh, no, I did. That's what I'm saying. But that yeah. doesn't tell you the time frame. It just tells you the total number. Time, so he calculated out based on... Frame. All, all your photos should be uh, time stamped. Well, yeah, but it doesn't show you... Like, it shows you a total number account of total pictures. It doesn't show you a total time frame in that. Sure, you can go into each picture and like calculate if you wanted to like do all this mathematical yeah, addition. But, but I can go in here right now and tell you exactly how many pictures I took between Friday and today, or between last yeah. Friday and next yeah, Friday. I can next... tell you that too. You know, you can't, it doesn't you know tell you I mean. how many minutes. It doesn't tell you how many minutes you've done it. How Not many total. minutes I've took taking pictures? Right. Why? Why? Okay, this we're, this is a See, debate for another my, time because you're going to run out of battery. You're going to run out of he battery. Calculated how many but, minutes I've been awake versus how many pictures I took and how many pictures per minute I took during my waking hours. And it was every uh, two and a half minutes I was taking a picture. So, anyways, so you weren't awake yeah. very long then. Oh no, we were awake <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm looking. I'm bugging you because because. But but keep, keep in mind, for those of you watching, Robert likes to take pictures with his various devices in 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 exciting situations. Go to a game, go to an event, uh, on a nice walk in a beautiful place, out on vacation in beautiful places. I, however, fancy myself a photographer, not professional, but a photographer nonetheless. So I might go out on a walk and take three hundred and fifty pictures in the fifteen minutes I'm gone. So I'm I'm just making fun of I'm poking fun, but <laughs> I also throw out 349 of those pictures. Though, oh, I'm garbage. sure I'll weed out a bunch of mine too. So, yeah. well, more of yours will be better because you take your time and take the picture. I start snapping and snapping and snapping. I end up keeping about one percent. So that's yeah. that, that's that's the big difference. So, anyways, yeah. that so, said, we're we're gonna have to you know mosey on before he goes down to one percent and it just kills itself right in the middle of this <laughs> that's right and we need it to so, save so yes yes so on that note i am robert <laughs> from currently the uk tomorrow the us and we have lionel from lionel and i'm in fiji <laughs> in my head uh, and yes. we'll uh, we'll see it uh, you know next time and uh, hope maybe we can get we can get get one in earlier or or do another short video at some point i i doubt it oh, but we we'll, yeah. you know it can, you never know we'll but we'll see you again and hopefully you guys check out robert's channels and everything and and he'll be posting hit that like review of those things follow <laughs> do all the fun things and we'll see click, you next click week. and click 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 <laughs> see you later or I should say cheers because I'm in England. Cheers. <laughs> Cheerio. 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 <laughs> Bye. Arrivederci.